Welcome back to the Two Months Podcast presented by BioSteel. I'm your host, Joshua Marshall, and uh, we got our co-host with us this evening. He's back. Uh, we got Clay Vanderham. Vandy, how's it going? Vandy is dandy. Hockey season wrapped up last night. Um, if you follow my Instagram, you obviously saw, but yeah, the, the older boys did well. The younger boys, they kind of fell short. Fucking St. Albert. <laughs> no um, big deal. Yeah, no big deal, right? Uh, but yeah, it was another good year. It, this season went by so fast. I was just talking to my assistant coach at my U18, and he mentioned how fast it went. And I'm like, yeah, it did. Like, you blink and it's gone. And I'm, you know, and I'm like, my 15 year old's taller than me. My 12 year old's catching up to me in height. And yeah, but all in all, a good year. I, good parents, good crew on both teams. So it was fun. That's it was good. Fun. And uh, we got uh, the Brody McIntyre with us, uh, a.k.a. The Closer. Uh, Broads, how's it going? It's going well, buddy. Spring market is busy. Hockey's winding down. Uh, Clay's a champion. Clay, a good, that's a good sign that it went fast. That means you had a good time, and it was a good year if it went fast, right? Uh, yeah, I, I will say I, I normally – and you put it in the chat, you know, it's all coaching – Normally I'll say no this year. I, I, I admit I coached my ass off with that, <laughs> but, Not a point. but it was all, all in good. Uh, happy birthday going out to Ozzy today too. Yeah, right? 15 uh, man. The hundred point guy. Yeah. hundred points, 15 years old. Good for him. Yeah. My little baby's 15. It's crazy. Yeah. I, I think it's, uh, I know, it's nuts. yeah, it's, time flies by. Right. So, and even I know. Like, when this episode will drop out, it's, uh, Cash Canal's birthday, uh, Dustin's, uh, Dustin's little guy there. Uh, uh, nice. So, um, yeah. Happy. I need to be better friends with that guy. That guy seems like an absolute beauty. Yeah. Do you have his number? I should text it to you. And- I don't. I just <laughs> love his Instagram. It cracks he's me been up. On, he's been on the pod. He has. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. on the pod when we had uh, the the longest hockey game. Yeah. Okay. On with like Kurt Benz Miller and Ray Crawl. Yeah. Too, I believe, yeah. That episode. So that was when we were paying tribute to, uh, to, uh, to, to a friend there. Um, but, um, Baker, yeah. Or no, not Baker. No. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he's a, he's a beauty. He's a, he's one of the great ones for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, no, things are, things are good on that front for him. And, uh, well, you boss go. Yeah. I just got back, uh, I was just in BC. Um, yeah, I had to like leave mid shift to come home. I had to had a medical thing to take care of, so I had to come home mid shift, and then I got the clearance and I went back. So I finished out my shift, and uh, yeah, unfortunately lost a couple brothers, good good brothers today, in uh, in the layoff uh, world. So we uh, our our yeah. project wind down. So uh, just unexpectedly uh, some lost some lost some good workers, and hopefully. Uh, you know, um, they'll find work somewhere else, but, uh, that's the, the unfortunate part of construction. There's like the, uh, you work yourself out of work, especially on a job like that. So <laughs> there's only six months left. So, um, but yeah, no, uh, you know, uh, doing a lot better. Uh, yeah, it kind of opened up last pod and, and, uh, definitely dealing with some stuff, but, uh, finding, uh, some better days and some good things to, to do. Vandy kind of sent me some nice text messages and had a lot of people reach out and, um, had a really good chat with, uh, with actually Michael Backlund today. And I had just no name drop in here, but I Matt Benning too. And Matt Benning is going to join us later this week on the pod. So, uh, so looking forward to kind of that and just getting back to our rhythm here. Um, but yeah, no works, works kind of busy and podcast is busy and then uh you got a pretty exciting time coming up here uh broads with the provincials i'm looking forward to that how excited are you for that oh it's the best yeah it should be really good hockey uh red deer and air came out of the south and they're both really good teams Air-D- no calgary team uh, came out pardon me a calgary team didn't come out no red deer be one and air beat the other Wow. Which is wild. The North Stars and the Flames, who are both really good. The Flames are fantastic. But uh, yeah, two, I don't know, I wouldn't say upsets, but two two teams got through that are really good. And then Shirt Park got through. They're a good team. Uh, and then KC's going to host it. So yeah, it should be really good hockey. And I, the thing I like about the kids' team this year is completely different than last year. Last year, they were 
kind of pushed around in the provincials. So yeah. the coach went with a bigger, heavier team this year and KC tried to bully them last, just during the last round of play, the play downs and it didn't go very well for them. It was, it was good to see the big boys standing up for everybody and doing their thing. So that was good. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it this weekend. Should be good. So is it starts Thursday night or Friday night? Starts Thursday. I think our the kids' first game is noon or one or two somewhere in there. Yeah. Where where are they? It's at the Meadows. Oh shit! So close. Yeah. It should be good, right? We'll play. I think the kids play one or two, and then there's opening ceremonies, and then they play the evening game. So and then after that, it's just one a day, one Friday, one Saturday, and well, maybe two Saturday. It's probably one in the morning, and then semis or quarters or whatever works so you play two games on thursday and then one friday yeah yeah so thursday night might be a little tough but is what it is so everybody's got to play two one day i think yeah do you know who you're... it's really good hockey though man it's fantastic for 14 years old yeah wild it'd probably be a lot of scouts there and whatnot too i would assume right yeah there's gonna be a ton yeah, yeah. last last big tourney of the year right they want to see who can step up when it matters not when it's seven one right you got that right. Yeah. Um, how uh, how are the kids doing? Are they pretty excited? Any nerves? Like, what are the kind of the conversations that you're kind of having with them right now? For... Well, I got a goalie living in my house too, right? So the goalie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's so weird, man, having a goalie. It's just, they're just different. They're a different breed, man. They're just like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm like, well, you, you don't seem very excited, but we'll go with that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Just kind of like, all right, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, and my kid, uh, I like to always just want to go. Hey, you guys, next week, talk about a dinner today. Did you excited for provincials, Dad? That's what he said. I don't give a shit if I get a goal or assist. I just want to win gold. So, yes, that is a perfect answer, buddy. Yeah, good attitude to have. Yeah, it should yeah. be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm actually really excited for it. Yeah. Well, kid, if those oh, teams uh, good, good it up against you guys, that power play. Fuck. Yeah, get it clicking. Well, the power play, you know what? I've been. It's it's good for a reason. They've have a guy come out every Friday. Umberto Fiorello comes out every single Friday and works on it. So it it should be good, right? You've been working on, it. and it's it's truly a weapon, right? Teams take penalties and they get scored on. Yeah, right. And they score some clay. I'm gonna send you a, a power play goal. I'll send it to you too, Bosco. That they scored. It's just. Honestly, for 14 years old, it's a thing of beauty. Like everybody touches it. Yeah. Everybody's been ding, 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 ding. And then somebody just basically taps it into the empty net. It's, it's unbelievable. I, the last game we played, I had uh, two people come up to me and say, I don't know why me. They're just like, this power play, it's beautiful. Both of them, that's the word they use. Like, yeah. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful yeah. to watch. <laughs> like, awesome. It's good to see. Yeah. So, uh, we'll get them, boys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, how is, how, how, for your season there, Brody, and we'll kind of go back to you, Vanny, and then we'll get into some other stuff. But um, from the start to like now, Broads, like how uh, how would you view your guys' season, um, even for your other kids too? Like, are, is there something that you kind of learned a lot this year as a parent, and you know, and something talking to your kids about what they can you know take from what you kind of see from the game and what they're kind of seeing from the game too? Well, my biggest takeaway this year is. I think why they're such a good team, like they're a really good team. They've got lots of kids who have developed really well, but they're really close in. Like they all hang out. And I think a huge amount of credit goes to their coach, Jeff Giacol. But what they do is on Mondays, they do after the weekend, they do yoga, they do some video, and then, then they do something called the sharing circle. And they go around the room and each kid shares something good or positive, something negative that happened in their life. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, you got a D on that math test or you got an A on the math test. You know, your grandpa felt your grandpa is in the hospital or whatever it is. And and that over the course of the season, these kids are so tight now that like they're a team, right? Culture, culture matters is what I knew that before, obviously, but they've done a, gr a great job of building that culture. And now this is a really close knit of bunch of kids. Like you watched the last game, you know, they take a shot and somebody touches the goalie and then there's five St. Albert kids surround that guy. And they're all, I mean, they're 14, they're not fighting or anything, but they're stepping in between the goalie. They're pushing the guy. They, they all got each other's back. Every single one of them has the other guy's back. And that's to me a, a massive reason why they're a very, very good team. 
Yeah, I kind of shaped. That's my biggest takeaway. Yeah. And I, I again, I go back to Jeff Giacobo, the coach who's done a fabulous job of building that culture, whether it's through that sharing circle, whether it's they do lots of team bonding. Like just last uh, Saturday, they had some sort of basketball tournament at uh, the rink. He was gotten teams and competed against each other and played games and just bonded as a team. And they've done that all year. Yeah. So yeah. it's really good. It's kind of like shades of that video. If anyone saw last year of uh, Vasilevsky when he got ran and then it didn't matter what, like all five players on the ice, the Tampa Bay lightning just went right. hundred percent. Yeah. Just, like just that mentality. Right. And I remember yeah. earlier this year in Boston, when uh, Marchant ran Timothy Lilligren right after that game, when the next day Toronto had a video and they're like, this is what we need in our team. And it's still not, yeah, that's you know, right. Toronto, but you know, Sheldon Keith was just like, this is why this team is this good. And they've won the back-to-back cups. And it's kind of a shades to what you're talking about and being that close, close knit team and good coaching. Uh, uh, I'll pose the same question to you, uh, Vandy. Obviously you guys want city champs this year, but uh, you know, how do you view your minor hockey season with uh, both your kids and as a coach too? Yeah. I, well, starting with the youth, the younger kids, I mean, they're uh, obviously they're still learning how to to play that team game and you know you still get the mentality that i can go in to end and snipe water bottle knockers that kind of thing <laughs> you know the prettier the goal means you win the game kind of kind of attitude but no they, they i mean our younger kids they started moving the puck they realized um i use that same analogy to my u18 kids that i was coaching because it took them a month to realize you can't carry the puck very long or you're going to be looking at, at the ceiling. Right. And, and, and for me, it, it kind of, I used the same mentality. Like it was, it was an eye opener. Everybody knows the story about the beginning of the year, but I used the same mentality for both teams that everybody has to get, you got to get buy-in. And at the end of the day, in the playoffs, you got to win that game to to move on. And for for those that don't know, like we we don't do series like like what they do at the club level. We we do it's it's round robin, then it's it's knockout. Um, for Fair Jace's enough. yeah, for Jace's team, it was two losses. You're out, kind of like Meyer Hockey Week. But either way, there's a game. There's a certain point in the in the playoffs. And it's not even a, an elimination game or anything like that. There's a game that you got to win. Mm-hmm. And and if you don't show up, unfortunately, you're you're going to get a, a, you know, a tougher go to get to the final. For Jace's team, our team, the U18s that won uh, cities, we had, we won that game. And and for Nash's team, our U13s, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't win that game. And it was a tougher row. We ended up having to play. Um Brian's team, Brian Browse and St. Albert, and they ended up going to the final and winning it eventually. And and we knew playing that game at U13 level that that game was going to be the deciding factor on who wins this playoffs. And yeah, unfortunately, the team the team that beat us in round robin, the game that we should have won, Strathcona, Kyle Brodziak's team actually, his son Lenny, and uh, they beat us seven two. Handley, they ended up going to the final against St. Albert, who we ended up playing and losing to as well. But it's, uh, I mean, for the U18s, it was, it's so different. Like these kids are at, at community. They're, they're, they got so much going on in their lives. They got jobs. They got, and I get it. Like it, every, every hockey really isn't their main driving factor, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got other shit going on. They got girlfriends. They got this, that, the other thing. School is another thing for, I, I had three, four, five um, kids that are graduating midgets. So that means they're ultimately they're graduating high school. So they're focused on school as they should be. And it's just a different mentality than what I was used to at the midget level. Midget. I mean, I coach club for 11 years. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, these kids are focused on hockey. And it took me a while to, quite honestly, it took me a while to get used to, oh, you can't make practice because you got school. Well, why wasn't your school done? And then I'm like, no, these kids aren't. <laughs> hockey isn't the be-all, end-all for them. And and I get it. 
And then for them, I, I had three um, coaches on my staff that they had grown up with their kids coaching them and, and their kids are graduating. And to see them win that final game, and I was like, oh, okay, this is this is what it's about, right? It's not it, it took me a while to get to get that mentality out. It'll never that mentality will never be gone. I I'm always one hundred percent we win, this, that, the other thing. Uh that'll never get out of my my mindset, but but it was it was so gratifying to see these guys celebrate with their sons and and yeah, it was good. It was good. <coughs> awesome buddy i had a good year and i like i say the parents on both it's incredible it yeah i mean that's what it is that's what it's about that's why we do it yeah you got that right it's a it's a lot of fun it's uh you know um you know with with me working i credit you what you're doing what you did with those those mlac u13 kids because i know i mean anybody around they those kids went through a lot this year yeah they grew you know, matured this, that, the other thing, but what you did for them, Bosco, you have no idea, no idea how good you <laughs> made them feel and how, how much you touched them um, mentally to, to, to make them feel good. Cause they've, they've, they had a tough go with this year and it is what it is. Yeah. It what, was... you, what you did for them. Good for you. Thanks. Thanks, man. Um, you know, it is nice to, you know, uh, yeah, Anzi Kopitar and Trevor Lewis to come up and meet them and and take a picture with them. Um, you know, uh, Daryl Evans too, obviously former NHLer, um, who, who's on the Kings broadcast. Uh, yeah, I think we pretty much hit most of the MLAC teams this year. Um, got that morning skate experience. Uh, you know, uh, Ron McLean, um, you know, friend of the podcast uh, earlier in the earlier in the year. Um, Brody was on the the great end of hearing a nice comment from uh, Ron McLean on Oilers. Now I know Brody usually doesn't like me talking about these things, but just, just goes inside of what Ron talks about and, and uh, you know, a great person. And obviously I'm kind of giving us a, a little bit of a plug on hockey night Canada and, you know, just these players, like, you know, like we were at, I was at, um, my, I was at a morning skate for that battle of Alberta with uh, my, um, my high school, uh, a high school teacher who's like a father to me uh so his kids played on two different teams so we brought their kids and it was kind of cool like we're watching the, the players practice like the Oilers just played the night before like there was a, a rare time where they had the Friday night at home and Saturday night at home and Connor McDavid like all the D were out and Connor McDavid comes out with Corey Perry and Sam Gagne those are the only forwards that came out and then Pickard was in that and, Con and Connor just back and forth with Pickard and Connor was making some nice goals and Pickard was making some nice saves. So the kids were kind of cheering and I've never seen this before. We've done this a lot dating back to last year and Connor just stopped like uh, in the middle of like a drill after he made a nice play, just looked back and looked at the kids and smiled, had the biggest smile on his face. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's it. And yeah. But the as, as a star, my... right. We've yeah. talked about this. That's yeah. all you got to do. Yeah. And it was funny. <laughs> like, you were at one of them last year, uh, Vandy and, um, he stopped and he smiled. He looked at, he looked at, um, at Corey Perry and he said something. And then all of a sudden, like a half an hour later, like this, one of the guys in the track suit from the orders is like, yeah, Connor and Leon want to meet these kids. So they, they went downstairs and got to meet them before the game. And then unbelievable. Backlin Backlin was already set to come out and he spent 15 minutes with both teams and just, you know, great captains. And, you know, so just kind mm -hmm. of great people too. And, um, you Kids know, to remember that for the rest of their lives. Hundred percent, million percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, whether that's the highest, the best player they meet, or obviously like you know it's Connor and Leon, right? So it's two of the best players in the game right now. And even every kid was engaged to see Michael Backlund. It was so nice. And even Craig Conroy took took some time and took some pictures, signed some autographs, and yeah, just um, great, great people. And uh, I feel bad for the players because they got to the visiting team has to come from the hotel across Ford hall and the autograph seekers are just all over them. So, um, it was crazy. So it was funny because well, maybe, maybe the mutts got to hire security. Well, the flames have their own security guys. So he, he actually, um, cause it, like the hotel and the arena is attached. So they have a bus that just goes around the corner yeah, right. and picks them up. So like, 
Kadri and Huberto and Uyghur and a couple other guys, they got a text message being like, yeah, like the Seekers are out pretty bad. So they got on the bus and then they just found a different way to get back to the hotel. But uh, but yeah, I just, I feel bad. Like the kids, they were fine signing anything for the kids and taking pictures with the kids in the, in the Ford hall hallway. But uh, yeah, it was kind of, we, it was just interesting. And then when we had, you know, the U13 team there, um, you know, Canals team and whatnot, the pursuit of motion team, like, Drew Doughty just taking the time, taking the pictures, you know, Kent Bay, all those guys. So, um, I don't know. It's pretty cool to do those things. I know I'm, I'm close to here with MLAC and stuff like that. And um, they have their banquet night on the, on April 3rd. But uh, it's been a tough year for that organization. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, um, some teams, you know, got, got beat up pretty good. And I just think things like that kind of help out you know, for throughout the year, if that's that one moment that they can look back on and have a good, good moment at that's, you want it to be the best. So it's kind of why we do it in a way too. And they're good sports and it's, it's, it's tough. So hopefully things get better. I, in that program, it's been around for a very long time, if not the longest club hockey, let alone in Edmonton, I think in Canada, but uh, great jerseys. Yes. Great, Great jerseys. Great jerseys for sure. So um, so that's our minor hockey talk. I don't know if you guys want to add anything in before we uh, move on to some NHL stuff, but uh, the Rupper's team won silver. There, yes, yeah, yeah. Those they did uh, really well too. Yeah, Zach Buggy, he, he posted that Datsun goal. That was not safe. That kid, is it Faulkner? <laughs> Max Faulkner? I, Max Faulkner. Like, come on, man. This, these kids are twelve years old. I know. Pulling right. shit like that. Come on. <laughs> And probably they probably all can do that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's the fucked up part. <laughs> yeah, the skills in this uh, in this game right now is unreal. Listen, I I know we've talked about this before. Trev told me he's like, like even when Ozzy and and Luke were coming up, he's like, "Play these kids are doing shit." That and I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck off." We were so good when we were younger, and then oh. you know the more hockey I watched watch, I'm like, "Oh my god, these kids are fucking skilled, and they can do it at." Like top speed, you watch Ozzy and you watch Luke. You watch, you know, they, a couple of kids from Red Deer, and and because I got that flow thing, and and you're just like, oh my god, these it's nuts, fucking, yeah. and they're hitting. I got a good and- story. My uh, my when I played Kiwi, we won the provincials, and there must have been at the time like the local radio guy was the was doing the game for us. So my buddy's parents moved and he found a VHS tape from that game. So we got it converted to DVD and just kind of handed it out to whoever was still in town. And my kid Turner was probably 10 or something at the time. So I sit the kids down. I'm like, watch this boys. Your dad was fucking awesome. Throw this video on. We were terrible. His 10 year old team would have, they would have skated circles around us and they were three years younger. It's you the- not even close. Canadian wooden hockey sticks, yeah. <laughs> like the coho, like oh god, yeah. Cooper pants. It was so Cooper, slow. Yeah. I couldn't believe oh, how slow it was. God. It was terrible. Yeah, they're skilled, man. These kids are every. Well, I mean, and it makes sense that like the NHL wants to do the expansion. You know, they want to get back into Atlanta and they want to yeah. get to uh, Utah. Like the appetite is going to be there. Like these kids are getting better. The the talent is getting better. So it's not going to. Like, like obviously the way the generation is now, you know, maybe you need a few more years, but I don't think it's going to water down the league, but we can get into that, you know, tonight or whatever. But uh, there's obviously a lot of other great things to talk about in the, in the NHL right now. And, um, but uh, let's do our quick Oilers report here. Um, everyone kind of tunes in the flames just lost here. So uh, uh, we'll get to those guys in a second. Cause this is a wild stat that I'll have for people that will probably blow them away. That may not, may not know. A lot of this, but um, let's get to our Oilers, Oilers report sponsored by our friends at Shattified Salon and Barbershop. They got three locations in Edmonton, uh, Shaddy and Mo uh, doing a great job. And Troy Stetcher was at Shattified today getting his hair cut. So he'll be in the lineup tomorrow. So uh, Mo uh, took care of him. So that was pretty cool at the downtown location. So that's typically where most of the Oilers go to. So if anyone wants to get their hair cut, they have a, a location downtown. That's the one that Troy Stetcher was at. Um, you know, great, uh, 
a great game on Saturday, Broads. Uh, you know, and you talked about it, uh, Casey Middlestad. What a great player he is. Probably didn't see him a lot oh. in Buffalo, but uh, great ad for for the Colorado oh. Avalanche. They're fast. They can move the puck. Their record at home is unreal. Um, but you know, the last four times these teams have met, uh, it's gone overtime. And how close these teams are right now, Broads. Oh, that was I could watch that every day. This. And it's not just how fast they are, it's how fast they play, right? They get the puck and they're going north right now. Like right now. And they all everybody is flying. They're moving the puck fast. That middle set, I haven't seen him in well, other than highlights, right? I don't watch much of Buffalo and he's fantastic. That Gerard, that little D man, how good is he? How good is Taves on the back end? Right? There's it's just and it was back and forth. It wasn't like it was just Colorado. That was entertaining hockey and I, i'd like to know if somebody was at the game if if they can physically say man that seemed faster live than they the last game they were at because yeah because yeah, it was freaking awesome i could I, that that could be a western cup final right there it could be it uh you know we had it a couple of years ago we'll see what hap- happens again um Vandy. I'd love to watch it. Seven yeah. games of that. Hey, Vandy, your your thoughts on uh Well, I, like Brody just said, I mean, <laughs> I think at least from that, from our side, the Pacific and and what I, I think the Western final comes Colorado, Edmonton, maybe Dallas, throw Dallas in there. I I do like Dallas as well. But yeah, the pace of play, like <laughs> every every coach wants that type of atmosphere that but you, if you don't have the horses to do it, and that's the thing with having guys like McKinnon, guys like Ratton, and guys like Leon, guys like Connor, yeah, Nutri- you can yeah. you could create that pace of play in practice. But it, if you don't have that that leadership right off the bat, I mean, but we, yeah, we saw it. It was full tilt Saturday. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I, mean, I think, and Bob Stoffer said it good today. When I got when I landed, I was listening to Oilers now on the way home, and and uh, he said he's never seen a team practice so fast in his life. And meeting the Colorado Colorado Avalanche, like their their pace right, in practice is right. is just matches what they have on the ice. Now Nikita Zadorov, I just want to get this because our friend Craig Button was just talking about this uh, on uh, TSN here. I, I didn't hear what he had to say. I just saw the clip at the bottom, but. Uh, Zadorov was asked if he was to build a team today, what player would he build? What's the first player he would build his team around? And he picked Nathan McKinnon. And Craig Button just said he's like, interesting comment because, you know, Zadorov obviously played with McKinnon, but he's played against Connor and the Edmonton Oilers for quite a few years, obviously, with uh, being on the Calgary Flames. Um, I'll ask you guys that question, you know, would, is that a fair comment for Zadorov to kind of make? Like, obviously, McKinnon's won a cup already, but, uh, you know, Two great players to pick, but if you had to pick one, who are you picking, Vandy? Like, are you pick? Yeah, are you picking Nathan McKinnon to build your team around, or are you picking Connor McDavid to build your team around today? I, I, I'm gonna Switzerland is here. I'm, I'm on the fence. Yeah, I, I, I'll go either way. I don't think you can go wrong with either. Now, um, you. I mean, the edge goes to McKinnon. He does have a cup, and and but I think the drive and the competition and what people don't understand is the mentality that that these players have over, you know, like I, I don't like not to knock Connor Brown, but Connor Brown was a high scoring junior player, or or um, like Robbie Shrimp, high scoring junior players. What what separates these guys, and everybody said this, is McKinnon the drive to win. And and Connor's got that too, you know, obviously haven't done it, hasn't done it, but that that fucking mentality, that drive, that like I want I am the best, I know I'm the best, because they do. They'll never maybe not tell you, but that drive to win. And that drive to compete and to like I can the, the three of us can't explain it. Obviously, we're not no. at that level. Yeah, but they had they have that they're they're built differently. We say goalies are built differently. They're they're built differently. They 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 have that 
Sidney Crosby, Wayne Gretzky, they, you know, they're great people off the ice. Great. But you put a, you put shoulder pads on them and they're <laughs> fucking, they're mental. Yeah. They just yep. they have that, that, you know what I mean? And they're too, uh, they're so too to answer your question, I wouldn't. I, I I don't know. I would take either. I would. You're doing half. the Bob McKenzie. You're not. I would take. It. I would take bottom half. Connor, top half. McKenna. Closer. Your thoughts. Go ahead. You're supposed to say something. Too. Well, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna pull out Switzerland, but I'm gonna say if I had to build an organization, I had to start with one player. It wouldn't be a forward. It'd be a stud defenseman for sure. But I'd oh, 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 be going to kill McCarr or somebody like that, right? I wouldn't be getting a forward. That's for sure. 30 minutes in really? A, I'd rather have a, a rock somebody on the ice. You know, you're not going to get scored against, and you're probably going to get a couple goals. But I, I, I'm with Clay, though, as far as the two forwards. Like, what are you going to do? They're both – you want awesome or you want awesome? You want the best or the best? There they are. Yeah. yeah. And I can understand picking McKinnon because he's been there. He's already won. Right? If he thinks they're equal players, well, you got one guy who's won, one who hasn't. Why not take the guy who's got that experience? That That makes sense to me. Yeah. Now, how about you, Bosco? Ah, uh, it's it's a great it's it's great. Like obviously, we know Zadora's is very outspoken, and you know he's was on spit. The Sh- fact that he answered that is like is, it is that's incredible. It is very I, not hockey, and yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, like I, it's tough because like if I look back, like I don't think Connor ever got to an OHL final, you know, and I know he's won some World Juniors at least one. So like. And McKinnon's gone there. I think McKinnon's even won a Memorial Cup, um, but uh, with the Halifax Mooseheads. But you know, like there's been a little bit more there. But we all know when McDav- M- McKinnon came in, he wasn't lighting the league league up like Mc- Mc- uh, McDavid was off the start, right? It took, yeah, it took a while. It took Nathan McKinnon a few years to figure it out, just like it took that guys like Mark Scheifele to figure it out. Now he's there. You know, he's probably going to win the MVP this year. Um, so it and you know obviously you're going to go to recency bias because he's won a cup already so it's tough like but it like I've been saying this for years like recent like these these type of players win cups and they yeah. they win cups in the organizations that get drafted in it's pretty rare that a guy like Connor McDavid would not win a cup in Edmonton like just saying like history bias like they eventually figure it out these generational game changing players you know, they get there at some point. So like the West is going to be hard. Like the six teams, that, yeah. there's going to be eight teams in the playoffs, but you know, but you're going to no, have no, no. in the first round I, for crying out loud, just because the way the matchups work in the playoffs. Okay. I, I argue do, do, because Connor's, Connor's figured it out. Connor knows what it takes when no, hasn't got there. Doesn't have the pieces. Do the organizations figure it out? To, get to, to put these pieces in place for them to win. Look how long it took Ovechkin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's just recent memory. Yep. I think the organizations also have to 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 figure it out. I think these players know how to win, what it takes to win, and the drive. And you just you said it with Bob Stoffer of what he said about the pace of play and the pace, just the pace of practice that these guys you think Connor goes out there and just I'm doing Michigan's in the, you know, behind the net. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Like no. his, he is driving. Everybody thinks, you know, DeHarnay's put in the work. Yes, 100%. But if you're going against Connor McDavid every night or every day in, in practice, practice, you have no choice. If you want to stay in the lineup, you put in the work afterwards, obviously. But you've got to work. To, you, you know, if you could stop him, better and, just by playing yeah, against him. right? Osmosis that just yeah. well, I guess it wouldn't be osmosis, but anyway, whatever. Yeah, I, I play, I got a theory on the teams. You talk about, um, well, like you said, the organization's got to do a, a good job. Remember how Holland didn't go all in, and, and whether fans are saying, Oh, we got to go all in, all in, right? Well, I think the theory is that I, I find, anyways, other than the anomaly, each these generational talents, for some reason it takes them till they're 26, 27, 28 years old to figure it out how to play the right way, which is absurd to me that it takes them that long, but it does. And now look at, this is the year Holland's going all in. He didn't go in all last year because he's like, we're not ready. We're not playing the right way. These guys are not ready to win. They're not ready to 
get 10 less points and make sure they don't right. get scored on seven more times. Yeah. Right. And now they're, look at them, man. You see McDavid's a changed person to me. He's a changed player watching him. He back, even Mike also come in. He doesn't like watching the Oilers, but he'll come in and be like, Oh, <laughs> Hey, McDavid back check. Like it's, it's like, yeah, this is the new McDavid. He's finally figured out. And he's, is he 27? McDavid? I don't know what he is, but either way, he's taken six, seven, eight years to figure out that I don't need to cheat and stand in the neutral right. zone as much as possible. 100%. So I think that's probably on the organizations. They know that, that it takes some time. So they're not, they're going to build it for and, when they're that kind of age. And make no mistake about it. These elite players are watching other elite players. How the fuck did he win? And, and, and I was just going to get to that. He is 27 years old, uh, uh, Broads. Uh, God damn it, Connor's 27? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? But, but I, what I was going to say is, yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. What the fuck? Crazy. Patrick Kane was just 27. I when know. He yeah, you go. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. No, it's uh, – that. Uh, damn it, I lost my train of thought now. But, Sorry, buddy. No, it's all good. I'll, I'll get it back. I'll get that thought back. But, yeah, I, I just think it's, like, it's interesting how they – the process works out for them is is the point. Like, you know, they, they get there. They figure it out. They understand it. And – what I, yeah, so now I remember what I was going to say is like every time you hear is like these guys are like watching like when they're not playing like tonight, like they're watching the they're, they're watching NHL games. So the Oilers have an off night. They play Montreal tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised that McDavid's watching a couple of these games that are going on tonight. Maybe he's not watching all of it. Obviously, you got to break away from the game, too. And he's probably a, a busy guy who knows what his schedule is. Obviously, he's pulled in many different directions for a lot of things that he does outside of the game. But you know, everything you hear is like being around the Calgary Flames locker room this year, like just, you know, guys like Matthew Kachuk's long but gone now. But like one of the things I kept hearing about Matthew Kachuk in the Flames locker room is that when he wasn't at playing a game, like he was watching every single game being played at that night. Like he was channel surfing. They all are. They, they are. And I remember, I remember watching, I remember watching like, and this will be a good transition to the kind of what Brody put in the chat today with uh, Chris Johnson's tweet but I remember like watching um, a behind the scenes story on the Winnipeg Jets when they had Adam Oates at at Mark Shifley's house and, and there's a couple other Jet players there and uh, Shifley was just on his phone and he's like oh, he's like Mark Fain Mark Fain's on waivers like he was going crazy like Mark Fain was on waivers like just and I, I like I know for a lot of people they won't know like who's Mark Fain but you know career NHL defenseman had a pretty good career yeah, obviously former or other too, but like just that's how like in deep they are to like players going here and players going there. And it's just like getting to know some players recently, like, you know, their text is going back and forth. Like, Oh, like, what do you think about this trade? What do you think about this trade? Especially on the trade deadline. Like some of the players I got to know. And Listen, I, all the, these kids grow up together. They all they know. Did. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, and it's, you know, back when we played, we knew who was getting listed or drafted and all that stuff. It, it's times that by a million now with social media and the prospects and all this other stuff, but man, they, they follow and they're, they're, they're hockey junkies. They are <laughs> the, the elite players and the star players are <laughs> hockey junkies, man. They follow it. And you know, like my kids getting into the game and, and you know, he, he slowly, like not slowly now he's full on but he yeah. he's looking on instagram all that other stuff and you know brody and and rough's kids are are guaranteed they know everything about every team and stuff right yeah it, it's the yeah. way they are and they're fun and that doesn't stop no at the end of the day they're they're grown men playing a kid's game yeah and they're, they're still kids man yeah it is it's funny like even earlier this year like when T tyler to came to town and Ilya got to meet like got to see him again and like just here here's like here they, they went and just talked like they're just talking the game like it was just kind of cool to right. come back right. and right. watch that right and uh, you know all this stuff with the game and, and the players at, at that late at that level um you know and then like talking to Toff like last the other night I think it was last night the other night just how great it is in that Winnipeg locker room too and we're like we can't count that team out like they got a great player in him and Oh. They're doing they're doing good too, and they've already the West it, right? the West is going to be tough to get out of. Which tough, means the East is probably going to win the Stanley Cup, but the the West, Cup yeah, the West is just stacked, man. Yeah, hundred percent. How about Dallas? 
Oh, oh my god. god. Nobody's talking about what did Dallas do at the deadline? Yeah, they got Chris Tanev, and that was their biggest move, right? That's it. That's that was, a pretty good move. Yeah, hundred percent. It was uh and he scored in his first game. And you know, the 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 Boston Bruins had a trade in place to send Olmark there and Olmark nixed it to go to the LA, right? So like imagine if LA had L- Lannis Olmark in that, right? <laughs> You know, it would have been crazy. Like Cam Talbot, we'll see what he can do. A $1 million contract. He's been pretty good. He had a bit of a dip this year, but, you know, they're doing good. And, you know, Vegas is going to be Vegas. We know what's going to happen game one. Most of those guys will probably be coming back. So. Most of the hockey I'm world really... already knows what Vegas is doing. Yeah, it's just going to be fun, man. Like in Vegas, yeah. you get a wild card spot, for crying out loud. Like it's yeah, like, it's where it could trend in, trend into. And, like, how about this? And the best is they're going to play Vancouver. And the Vancouver fans haven't finished this high in so long or whatever. And they're going to get ousted in four games. How about this? The Washington Capitals are a minus 27 goal differential. They're oh. in the playoffs tonight after their win against the Calgary Flames. They're in the second wild card spot. So, um, unreal. Just unreal. So it's uh, Nick Baxter ever coming back or is he done? I think no, he's, he's done. I think he's done. Yeah. And congratulations. Yeah. Great. God, he was good. Yeah, he was he was good too. He had that hip injury that uh kind of came back from but it's, uh, it's been uh brought up but Mitch Love assistant coach with the Caps. Uh, really appreciate him uh taking time to uh get the, his Spencer right. Curry came out and met those kids at the at the practice the other day yeah. last week last Wednesday. That was pretty nice and uh uh, and the uh, other assistant coaches uh, spent some time with him too. So uh, another good friend of the pod and, uh, you know, just just another testimony of like how great hockey players and people in hockey are and it's... how they just want to give back to the game and put smiles on the kids' faces, right? So, um, but yeah, bro, did you put something in the chat earlier there in the uh, much chat? Um, your kind of thoughts on this, what the uh, Amazon series is going to do. Obviously, Toronto did this a couple of years ago. Um, it was kind of a good success. It didn't end well for Toronto, obviously, in the playoffs again. But, uh, you know, there's going to be about 10 to 12 star players that we're going to get uh, get to see uh, Amazon fall around. Um, bro, your kind of thoughts on this and, and what kind of players you want to see there? What, what players would you be entertained to be watching and behind the scenes? Well, one number one, I'm cautiously optimistic, if you will, Bosco. I'm worried that it's going to be boring, typical hockey. You know, they're not going to do anything that – ruffles any fighters just like all their interviews are the same i'm worried that that's the case i think they need to get like the marchands of the world the kachucks a couple crazy russians that are doing hilarious stuff uh you know a young rookie maybe he's kind of outgoing that type of guy Mm -hmm. Uh, i hope that's what they do i hope it's not the mcdavid's who are not going to say anything mckinnon's not going to say anything those type of guys right i hope it's no offense to them i'm sure they're nice people but I hope it's people with personality that can actually be good for TV and help actually promote the game and show the personality of the players other than what we see on TV, which is pretty boring, boring stuff, right? We don't see very many personalities in hockey. So I do hope that that's the case. Yeah. I hope that's the case one time. Yeah. I'm actually excited for it though. I'll watch it for sure. Yeah. I'll watch it. I'll give it, give it a watch for sure. Um, Vandy, your thoughts. Are you excited for this? Yeah. They, so all I read was that it, it, they were talking stars of the NHL. Now, what do they mean by that? I think yeah. you guys already touched on that. But, yeah, like, I mean, you could – like, let's say they started it this year and they had the 12 guys. Why couldn't you, you know, pull 180 and go, okay, we got to go to New York and do Rampy and follow him while he's – because, like, I – I think I put it in the chat. Maybe I didn't. I was I was in Florida when Rempe played the the game, the outdoor game. Yeah. And I was sitting with guys from New York, and we're t- I'm talking like thick New York accents. We were drinking, having a good time, and these guys are like, "Who the fuck is this Rempe guy?" <laughs> and then he did he. I think he fought that game. Yeah, he fought oh, Matt Martin. You know what? Yeah. is like a, a nice little story to that is. That for that was his first NHL game, and it was six years to the date where he lost his father uh, when he was young. No shit. Yeah, yeah. So the six years to the date, he got to play his first NHL game after losing his father. That was fifteen years I, old. So. That was a Sunday. So, yeah, it was a Sunday. It was the Stadium Series uh, in Met. The, the very next day, so I I I was there. 
for for the Daytona 500 is where I was. Unbelievable, by the way. We but anyway, and the next day I see these guys. They stayed because the race got canceled and blah blah blah. And I talked to them and they're like, they were telling me like that Rempe won game, and he's fucking like he's already got. Oh, well, he's yeah. to pay for dinners in New York. He's like, this yeah. guy's fucking love. He's like, yeah. And they're like thick, long eyes. <laughs> it was nice, Matt Martin, because Matt Martin knew the story of correct, him. Correct. Yeah, right? And Matt Martin said to him, I'll give you one here if you want one. And he took it, right? And So anyway. Did he know the was... story before the fight? Like the whole story? Uh, just that he like he asked for the fight is all I know. But you, you have Oh, yeah. So he didn't know the whole story. Yeah. But here, case in point, you could go back. And you could do a 180 off these and do spinoffs and kind of don't focus necessarily on the 12 stars that you want to do. And you could kind of, if they do that, like, because there's segments during the year and there's stories like Rempe every year where you can, okay, spin off it. And let's, <laughs> let's Jack, maybe go. That guy working at a Costco. Right. Wi Fi, that kind of thing, right? Where you, you you can there's stories that come out like that all the time. If they do that, unbelievable. Yeah. If they follow the same twelve guys, yeah, it's still gonna. Be, I'm gonna watch it. Every hockey fan is gonna watch it, but you know, eventually it'll get mundane and 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 yeah. If they if they can spin off it for mi- just a week, you know, or or a couple weeks, and and just follow that path, and then go brilliant. I mean, I like that. That's a good idea. What other play. what other league is doing it? Well, <laughs> well, the, the just NFL, golf. The NFL does their hard knocks. Golf, right? yeah, golf uh, is one. Yeah, um, but did yeah. you guys see real real quick? Did you see the uh, the backstory to uh, Keegan Bradley? No, no. Oh God, it's so brutal. So Zach Johnson's calling guys for the Ryder Cup to get in, <clears throat> and he's right in the mix. Like he's right there. And so he gets, uh, I heard this from the Netflix guy on Twitter was actually, he said, so Netflix calls him and says, Hey, uh, Keegan, um, Bradley, uh, Zach Johnson's going to call you in five minutes. So we need your 10 minute, whatever it was. We're going to run over here. Can we film this call? So Keegan Bradley's like, yep, done. Let's do this. So he gets, he hangs up the phone. He gets his wife. Okay, let's get dressed. It was in the morning. Let's get things dialed in. We're getting the phone call. Phone calls happen. I can't wait. He gets the uh netflix shows up they put the cameras up phone rings they you know they all dialed in they're ready to go and it was a no get the netflix fuck out of here that going in he basically got a phone call like yeah you didn't make it like how brutal is that that's about is as it, cutthroat as it gets knowing that's it, gonna happen and, and still doing it so that's wild so is that on that that golf show on the netflix full, yeah full swing but it, that and they showed it no, oh, they just show is... the actual. They show the phone call, but there's no backstory to it on the show. Oh my god! Yeah, but imagine. So imagine the yeah. NHL, the the twelve guys. If one of them's up for at the deadline, how about following him around for the lunch the right. hour before yeah. the deadline? Like, really? that'd be wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was in the Amazon series with the Leafs, there was something that happened with Willis <laughs> Nylander, and the NHLPA got it removed. Amazon, yeah, but nobody's oh, really? watching that. Yeah. But they were gonna. It's the Leafs. Nobody's watching that. It, I thought it was interesting, though. Like, <laughs> anyway, it was pretty. I'm kidding. Right? Of, I'm I know. Kidding. I thought it was interesting just because, like, how vocal. Like, you know, I remember there was a couple couple times, like, especially with the Frederick Anderson inju- inju- injury. Like, you know, like I remember them just sitting in in an office, and they're just like, they're asking the goalie coach and the trainer, like. Is this guy gonna play? Like, I need to save out of this guy. Like, right, right. He just he's always hurt. Like, like just swearing. Like, what's going on with him? And then I remember, like Jimmy VC, like Sheldon Key just skated up to him in practice. He's like, like straight up, I just need more out of you. Like, you're playing like shit right now. And like, what's going on here? Like, you know, who doesn't like, love that? Yeah, it was good. There's also like a video on. I saw it even on. Like, I saw the documentary, but yeah, it was Game Six against Montreal. You know, came in and he just said like. Walks right into the right, right into the locker room. He's like, mid, he's like, Himes, Marner, Matthews, your line's getting dominated. Like, I mean, dominated. Like, he was just like, Adam, like, what's going on? Here? <laughs> They're going right into overtime and they lost. He's like, you guys want to be great players or you guys want to be just shit freaking players? Like, 
just vocal, right? Like he's been there with his COVID mask on and just ripping into the players. But he's like, you guys are just getting dominated. Like Suzuki's line was dominating them the whole game. Like I would have laughed at him for wearing yeah. a mask. So <laughs> all, all the coaches had to wear one, right? So the players have to wear it. But I'm, I'm sure they uh I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure I'm kidding, but I'm I know, kidding. I know, I know. Um but uh yeah, it's just it's just who doesn't love watching that? Like no, I think it's a nineteen twenty nine hockey on Instagram. They yeah, also they got clips yeah. and like Mr. Curfew's done that where yeah. it's like that Laviolette speech, like fuck, dude. Yeah. Like every they I'm telling you, it's gonna be a, a hit. Yeah, it will be, it will be for sure. Um, with how big hockey is in in America now, yeah, like, yeah. man, yeah, like it's uh no, it's pretty cool, man. And obviously a big uh you know, the, the, the game is growing like in the, in the U S too. Like, like you said, like TNT's doing more and uh, you know, it's huge. It, yeah. Look at the dude from Boston. The guy's from fucking Louisiana. Yeah. The hell's his name? I'm like he's on the team. He's from Louisiana. Yeah, dude. And he like is, yeah, oh, he really? contributes. What the hell's his name? That's yeah, incredible. Yeah. So there's no dead space. You guys will have to continue talking. Yeah, no, no, no. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like I, you know, what's been Chicklets is doing for the game, and you know, even missing curfew. You know, right? Um, like they're just growing it. It's and, huge. Yeah, it's you know, like it's it's kind of cool to see, um, you know, where where it's at. Like obviously, yeah. Like I'm I'm looking forward to spin Chicklets tomorrow when this episode drops out too, because the follow between that Sean Ave. Uh, the Sean Avery and oh, the man. thing will be interesting to see what they have to say because the uh, what? Yeah, because they that's crazy. They, they, they canceled this. They posted the sandbagger and then they canceled the sandbagger once it came out because this guy that works for Bart. What do you mean? I was just honestly, I I don't know anything about that. I was gonna go watch the sandbagger after you can't anymore, buddy. It's yeah, off. It's, off. it's offline. Why? The, the spit and chicklets took it offline because this guy Jerry who works for Barstool Sports, I guess, like that Connolly guy. I don't know, like the full story, but it sounds like he, like a lot of people that, that were used to work for him, like tons of people, like he didn't pay him or something like that. It, it's from the sounds of it, he owes him like quite a bit of cash or whatever. I so, but uh, I, I wouldn't trust that calmly yet. Oh, can we say that? <laughs> he probably owns the fucking Apple podcast, like Kevin no, Conley, no, no. like He's the guy been, from, yeah. like the yeah, actor, yeah, the actor. Yeah, yeah, from Entourage, yeah, Entourage, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I fucking I wouldn't. I don't know, but there's just like all these he's like a fucking New York guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah. He is a New York guy. Yeah, he's a. Ah, oh, the truth guy will come out. We'll find out what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I guess he's been pretty quiet, so we'll see. Uh, see what goes on there, but uh, yeah, I guess he owes a guy like thousands, like thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, it was thirty-five grand or something. Yeah, yeah. Right? no yeah. shit, eh? Yeah, but then there was like something like he hired him and then just kind of didn't want him to work there anymore and didn't really say anything or something. I don't know. It was, it was kind of weird. Yeah, it was weird how they kind of just let it, like that guy's been sitting on that for a while, and then the sandbagger comes out and then boom, they gas it out. So I don't know how that worked. Um, yeah, Mason Mason Lowry from Boston. Mason Lowry. Yeah, he's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So we're talking about how you know hockey's growing in. The, He's fucking from Louisiana. Now he may have been born there, but he had a, he played Green Bay Gamblers. He was, went to Ohio Crazy. State. Yeah. Like, and yeah, he's got twelve points minus two, but he's twenty three years old, drafted second round. Like, awesome. That's how big. He, and you tell me he doesn't have buddies in Baton Rouge. Going, how the fuck did he? Who knows. If he was, you know, lived there that long. But if, yeah. if if they want to grow the game, grow within. You don't need to go to – I mean, the game's already big in Europe and stuff. But anyway, whatever. Like, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. So, obviously, some things at the GM's meetings uh, going on, obviously, uh, that's uh, in Florida. So, they have uh, – Meeting with George Peros, the GMs just want a little bit more consistency out of uh, the uh, NHL uh, player, um, the NHL Department of Player Safety, um, kind of inconsistencies and in suspensions. So uh, George Peros has uh, has that. 
they're talking about some weird rules in three on three. If you cert- if you gain the zone and then you leave the zone, you're not like you have to give the puck up because you're not allowed to do it. So there's no retrievals. Um, but I don't think oh, it's really going to go through. Mandatory visors was also another thing, but there's only like I think like maybe nine guys wearing no visors now in the NHL still. But uh, who uh, cares? Yeah, so I don't think that's a real big thing there. But, uh, um. So yeah, it will be interesting to see kind of what comes out of uh, tomorrow. There wasn't, I didn't see too too much that came out of today besides that Amazon series uh, conversation that happens there. So we'll uh, we'll see. Um, and then yeah, obviously uh, this is the time where some of the trades that w- tried to go through during the deadline but didn't, and obviously one of them was Cody CC and a first round pick to the Philadelphia Flyers for Sean Walker, but obviously we've seen Sean Walker go to the Colorado Avalanche and obviously score two goals on Saturday, but uh, that was a deal that didn't go through, obviously, with the uh, the, the LA. So what did, hang on, what did Colorado get or would give up for Walker? From what I know for that trade, in the Philadelphia trade that they did? Yeah. Uh, well, Ryan Johansson went to Philadelphia. Okay, so they in- wanted, they wanted a, a legit player. But Johansson got buried in the American Hockey League, though, right? So no shit. Yeah, he's back. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Lehigh Valley, and there's a lot of weird things going on there because uh, Carter Goche has the same agent as uh, Kurt Overhart has the same agent as Ryan Johansson, and uh, Ryan Johansson and and John Tortorella didn't really have the greatest relationship in Columbus when they Columbus, were together, right. so. There has been some talks about that, but he's in the American Hockey League. They just buried his five million dollars there. Um, obviously, a lot. Of, they're going to buy him out. They probably will at the end of the year. Um, you know, he obviously got bought out by the Nashville Predators last year, so uh, the Predators are sitting on a lot of uh, money there, and that's crazy too. What about the turnaround that team's had since uh, they couldn't go to the Sphere in Las Vegas to see you two play? Uh, so that <laughs> that's nuts. Pull on, pull it on there, and then uh, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, we'll see what happens. Carolina Hurricanes, uh, big news, Elliot Freeman reported, is that, um, you know, Rod Brendamore does not have a contract and his assistant coaches don't have a contract for next year. He is uh, one of the head coach. He won coach of the year last year. He is paid under $2 million. Um, so he wants his assistant coaches to be taken care of first before he gets taken care of. Again, again yeah, this is the second time. Uh, Jeff O'Neill was very outspoken. A uh, friend of the pod and, and the O Dog was very outspoken on his show Overdrive today. Tom Dundon, who owns the Carolina Hurricanes, bought the Carolina Hurricanes for two hundred and thirty million dollars. The team is worth nine hundred million dollars now. So, um, but he has a set standard of what the prices are for coaches. Um, I remember on record a couple of years ago, he's like, "Well, you look at the career earnings that Brendan Moore's made. He has made a lot of money. He doesn't need any more." So. <laughs> But uh, same I think with the GM, be- right? The GM, he wouldn't pay either. He wouldn't pay, yeah, Tom Bodell. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens there. But if uh, if Rod Brendamore becomes a a free agent in the summer as a head coach, I would say five teams will probably be looking to hire him, and five teams will probably fire their current head coaches just to have a conversation. Right. With him. But uh, he is, uh, and he's probably going to be a candidate. Either it's going to be him or uh, John Cooper going to be running Team Canada at the. Uh, well, it'll be both of them. Yeah, well, they'll be both there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Who's a head coach? We'll see, but uh, um, that's a good thing to have. We'll see what happens there. And obviously, Jordan Bennington is keeping the St. Louis Blues in the fight here. Oh my god! Um, so uh, we'll see what happens there. He could be the starting goaltender for Team Canada at the Four Nations Cup and the Olympics. So, um, and then yeah, Doug Armstrong was named general manager of Team Canada, and then he'll pick a his brass that kind of help him out uh, with that too. So a lot happening there, but uh, I guess the biggest thing we'll, we'll go back to the Rod Brendamore, you know, stuff. We obviously know how great of a player he was and uh, the pedigree he has, but what he's done as a coach, uh, Vandy kind of go to you. you you got that coaching background too. And what you appreciate of him as a head coach. Well, I mean, like, the fact that you're going to cap what you're going to pay a guy that's essentially, made your franchise did he not win a Stanley cup in 2006 yeah against the right? <laughs> right um and now he's coaching and and you're gonna i don't know i mean but it's at the end of the day it's a corporate world and here we are he he's gonna dictate the owner is gonna dictate what happens and 
I'm sure somebody's going to go to him higher than Brindamore and talk sense and go look you gotta pay him or he's gone and then now what do you got you got Aho you got all these guys <laughs> on that team Burns but no I I mean I I think did you did, did I hear that correctly he wants his assistant coaches paid second time yeah. Brody said yeah, to you, unbelievable. Yeah, this is la- this, unbelievable this happened last time right so unbelievable uh, and Just video coaches him. like everyone like it's the yeah, whole, whole deal yeah Brendan Moore knows that I yeah, whatever he's made forty million dollars throughout his career, whatever it was. Yeah, okay, I'd be the same. I'll be honest. I'd be I'd be the same way because without those guys, you're nothing. Yes, you're. you're Brenda Moore man. isn't. Brenda Moore is not. You know, Brenda Moore, and yeah, he's the face and the, you know, I, the workout, all that stuff. He's nothing without those, and he knows that. So. I mean, he could go to Edmonton, go to whoever, LA, all every, like you said, five teams. Yeah. But without the crew that he's got there, that he, I assume, has brought in or or built a relationship with, without them, he's he's not broad, you Rod, know, Rod the Bod, Rod the Bod, or you know, like they all talk about. Nah, yeah. good for him. Pay him. Just yeah. pay pay the people. Like fuck. pay the man his money. Exactly. Yeah, like, Good movie. Yeah. Your thoughts on that uh, closer? On him and coach and what that's I think it speaks to the uh the character of him as a human. Right. <laughs> um but at the end of the day, he's the owner, it's his money. He doesn't want to pay, he doesn't want to pay. Yeah. And I have a crazy theory. I don't know whether you guys want to believe it, you might they might jump through the screen right now and punch me in the face. <laughs> I think at the NHL level, the NHL level, not at Edmonton level or any of this, NHL level, every coach in the NHL is excellent. If they replace them and the players are still good, they're still going to be a really good team. I don't think he's going to make or break them being an awesome team or a shitty team. I think you and me, play if we took uh... over the employees, they're still going to be a good team. If that being said, if you if you replace an NHL uh, one of the thirty two NHL coaches in one team and put them on another team, the team is what it is. I don't I don't think the coaches. I think they're all awesome, so I don't think well, it's gonna make that much of a difference. I don't disagree Crazy with thought. you, but 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 I think <clears throat> it and we've all heard it. Where I think at 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 the NHL level, it's about probably well, it isn't probably it it's about controlling egos. Mm -hmm. and and i think that's where a lot of guys like the i don't know the hard asses yeah without getting into it completely or maybe we can but i mean you still have to hold these guys accountable i don't they don't get held accountable i know (laughs) they don't play i know david's been cheating for eight years of his life and he's on every other shift then they why all of a sudden? Down. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good topic. It's a good, you know, because a lot of people were even saying, like, if the Capitals get in, does, friend, is, does Spencer Carberry become a candidate for Coach of the Year? He's the youngest coach in the NHL at 41 years old. Um, you know, so does he, uh, you know, like. No, talk it, dude. Talk it's got it. It's you think it goes what he's down. done in Vancouver. Yeah. And just changed the mindset. I think co- coaches can change the the I don't know how to word it. God, I wish I was a wordsmith. But like how they can they like you can change the mentality and the thought process of a team. Mm-hmm. I think a coach can come in there and Immediately, that can happen right away. So, play. Yes. I agree. I think Talk gets an excellent coach. I'm not saying he's not. But did he do that, or did the coach change over three of half of their decor? Did the coach add a couple pieces, and all of a sudden their team looks completely different, and that's why they're good? But did Talk it did do that? Talk it didn't. The GM brought in three new defensemen. 
<clears throat> uh, or you tell me I can't that, remember the number, but but you're telling me that's why. I'm not. Or, I'm. I'm just. I'm asking the question. No, did, I did talk it turn this team around. Is a whole new defensive core the reason why they're good? You got Adam Foot and Sergey Gonchar, two great NHL defensemen, hundred percent on that bench with him too, right? So, but yeah, like, who brought who brought <laughs> Foot? Who brought Foot and Gonchar in? That was Rick Tockett. So Rick Tockett. Yeah. Well, well, obviously, no, which obviously it goes back to it. like Sergey Gonchar goes back to the the days of Patrick Valvine and Jim Rutherford, where the Penguins won those back to back cups. Um, you know, and talking. So so Rutherford coach. brought those guys in. Well, he brought them all in because they were all a pack. Correct. Players, okay. Right? So um, I would, I would, and Alvine re- redid their D. Yeah. No, I would say a coach. I would. Disagree. A coach can come in, and he can change the mindset of a team. If if so, what happened here in Edmonton with the bad start, the three one, the three nine and one with Jay Woodcroft, and then you got you know Paul Coffey and Chris Knobloch behind the bench. Well, you it, was got still, it was a sale, still the same decor same team. They had. What's that? Same team. Yeah, same team. But did coaching change that? Did Obviously, you would say it is like they're the best since since Knobloch's been the head coach. The Oilers have the best record in the National Hockey League, so and so have been a could, complete heater for all of it. Yeah, coach. like dominating. Like if anything, yeah. they have just they just their power play hasn't hit on at all cylinders. I love William Elander's comments today, and that's <clears> a different team. But like the Leafs' power play was number one for a while there, and then it's just gone to the shits. He's like, yeah, we were great for a long time, and we're the, just the shits now, and that's what it is. Like, that's what it is. Scotty just, Bowman says, yeah, the best coach is the one with the best players. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, I know we're kind of rambling. Yeah, on. but all. Yeah, go ahead, Ben. So, okay, Dave Manson telling you you got a back check or Paul Coffey. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. You know what I mean? Look at, like, look at Vinny. or you or or, or or look at. I mean, we can go, Vinny. We I witnessed when you we we talked earlier about guys working after practice and coming to, when we went to that um last year with the kids yeah, yeah with Matt and Vinny DeHarnay was legit while we were talking to Derek Ryan and and right, yeah. uh, Matt Benning Vinny DeHarnay was out on the ice working on strides and blue line moves and this that the other thing and. So I I think it it carries a different clout than Dave Manson maybe telling you or Connor lit, had a very good rapport with with Knobloch and Erie. Yeah. And one thing maybe, I'll say of those morning skates, regardless, the guy that's the healthy scratch is always the last guy off and the backup goaltender. But the last guy that leaves the ice every time I'm at a morning skate is Vincent DeHarnay. Every time. Good. Besides, like, really? it's a healthy scratch. It's getting worked by the assistant coaches and all that. But 100%. the last player that's going to play that night is always Vincent DeHarnay. And I remember, um, because we had the tracks, the MLX tracks team at Chris Knobloch's first practice against the Islanders. And after the m- practice, the morning skate was done. DeHarnay and Knobloch had a probably twelve minute to thirteen minute conversation that I timed at center ice after the after everything was done. You know, and you've seen his puck skills. Uh, they've tremendously gotten better from his last playoff game to where he is now. And, uh, you know, that obviously surprised putting in some work in the summertime, but definitely putting in the work with Paul Coffey, you know, uh, Brad Stewart on the back end too. Um, you know, like... J- like He's going- a legit defenseman now. Like before last year, we were saying right. he's kind of an up and down, you know, number seven, eight guy. He's just kind of here. And he's going to be out of lineup a little bit here. He banged up his hand. So I get, I guess, I guess to hand. answer your question, and that originally, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think a coach at this level can still motivate guys to to compete and to get the job done. And I, I think at at either Holland saw it or somebody in the organization saw it where they weren't. It. Woodcroft wasn't getting through to him. Madison wasn't getting through to him. And I I think a coach still plays an imperative role at this level. Now, um, how you deal with the young kids coming up, 
and where they came from and how they, you know, <clears throat> it is a whole different story. But I think, I think the fit is set in place and, and Holland's put everything in place for this team to succeed. Now it's up to the guys on the ice to do it. Yeah. You just said it, Clay. It's up to the guys on the ice. Yeah. It's not up to the coach. Your commitment to doing it is the right thing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Even I look at it too, like, you know, the Calgary Flames, the team that I'm close close with here is, you know, I think Ryan Husk has done an amazing job knowing the, 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 the deal that he's been had here with losing five pending UFAs throughout the year. And there's like, I know they lost tonight, but you know, they've, they've had a pretty decent year and, you know, Markstrom's been a big part of that, but um, you know, for a team that's, uh, you know, gone through what they've gone through, um, you know, losing so many players that are on pending deals uh, that are not going to resign there. That's tough. And the return that they got in a lot of those deals is pretty good. They obviously loaded up on a lot of Russians in their, in their back end too, but uh, um, yeah, it's a, that's going to be a team to kind of watch going forward here in, in the years to come, but it'll be interesting if they follow through this, this full on rebuild, does the guys like, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to move that contract that Huberto has, but could you move Uyghur? Can you move Kadri? Those guys have had pretty good years this year, right? So, um, and Uyghur well, got another goal tonight. If you yeah. move, the, yeah, you're you're going on rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. And and will the Flames fans stand for that? Yeah. Obviously, After they, signing, now would be the time, though. They got a new building coming, coming in. They yeah. could just sell it like that, right? Oh, don't worry, guys. By the time this is over, we're going to be good. A new building, it'll be awesome. Right. Just like the Oilers did. Yeah. Can you get rid I've of seen it work? Yeah. But can you, you get probably rid of can't. the Huberto contract? I don't think so. You know, unless Montreal takes it. But uh, um, and speaking of Montreal, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the St. Louis family. So uh, hoping all the What best. happened there? Do we know? Uh, something with his son. So uh, as far as I know, I'll kind of leave it at that. I think something's going on with his little guy. But um, yeah, all the best to to their family and um you know the hockey community is uh obviously thinking about them and hoping uh we see uh everything go well and everyone gets back to where they got to get back to and um and then we see him behind a bench again but uh you know definitely thoughts and prayers out to him um you guys want to add anything before we sign out i know we've gone an hour here but um i have a question <laughs> guys on twitter Slater, remember Slater Cuckoo or Coco, whatever his name was? Yep. There was an article on The Athletic, which I don't subscribe to. Anybody have any clue what happened to him and what what this article was about? Yeah. Basically saying his life was awesome up now. Yeah. um, I kind of got a story there, but uh, parts of the story I don't know that I want to share on the pod. But uh, definitely, yeah, from what I know – something with an eating disorder as far as I know is, um, you know, kind of depression and, uh, um, he wouldn't be able to kind of hold down a meal throughout a day from what I understand. Um, Jeez, cool. man. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of what he was going through in his NHL career. Um, but, uh, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, his, uh, I'm obviously I'm, I love home building. I'm big into home building and I think him and his wife uh, started a home, pretty good home building company in Ottawa. I think it's where he resides out of now. Um, so I kind of follow them on LinkedIn. Um, so they post a lot of good stuff in terms of, uh, terms of, uh, you know, building new houses in that area. But, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The athletics a good subscribe. I like it. I like reading. I'm learning more how to read now. So, but, uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, it's good. It's a good read, especially, um, you know, on, on, on my breaks and whatnot, kind of just get into some good articles there and um, yeah, get to meet some of these guys in the press box too, that dedicate a lot of time into these articles. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Behind the scenes works on that. Um, once the game's done, the press conferences is done. These guys are in the media room banging out an article as quick as they possibly can. So I remember the other day in the flames media room, we were talking and me and a couple of the TSN, the TSN guys and the, um, Sports that guys in the media, the guys that are writing their articles, like get the fuck out of the room. I'm trying to write an article here. Just go and talk in the hall. <laughs> so, but uh, fair. yeah, fair enough. Vandy, you want to add anything before we sign out? Mm, nope. No. Nope. Good luck. Yeah, come watch Boys. hockey, anybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Meadows. Meadows Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. Yes, it'll be there. 
So I'm looking forward to it. So uh, nice. I will be there. So, but uh, yeah, well, um, yeah, come by, say hi to us if we're walking around or whatever. I don't know, ask us some questions if you want. But uh, everyone, enjoy. Uh, I'm looking forward to an interview with Matt Benning that uh, will uh, come out on Friday. So, uh, you know, that would be kind of our next one. I think we might have one with Craig Button, just kind of working on that, and Mike Fuda. But uh, definitely look forward to our interview with uh, Ben, uh, with uh, Benny. Um, just came off two surgeries there. And so he's, uh, trying to work his way back into uh into things he won't play this year but uh, hopefully he gets a clean bit of health and he can get back on the ice next year but um all the best to everyone for tuning in uh you know stay tuned and uh give us a follow give us a like subscribe review us uh you know all that great stuff. Uh, really appreciate the support that we uh, have from all you guys so take care and have a good one